But it is clear that these people protesting are not constituents. They're not Republicans angry with their congressman for dismantling Obamacare. But what does the media report? The media is in collusion with the... Can I share with you, folks? Let me let me find this. I saw something that... Uh, two things. Now, let me be honest with you. Thank, ben, thanks so much for the call. I really appreciate it. Uh, folks, I used to believe that the media were Democrats. But I didn't think that there was no difference in the media. I, I mean, I thought there was a huge difference in the media and say, Occupy Wall Street and the radicals of Code Pink. I knew the media were Democrats. Yeah, I knew they were liberals. But I didn't know until recently, years recently, that they're gone. That they have become as radical, as bullish, as the most extreme left-winger in the country. And I'm going to give you an example of it here. David Gregory used to host Meet the Press at NBC. In fact, that's a great... Tim Russert. You remember Tim Russert, Mr. Snurdly? Tim Russert was a down-the-middle, big labor Democrat. But Tim Russert was not one of these wild-eyed, radical extremists who think America is the problem in the world. Tim Russert, family values were just like yours or mine when it came to raising his son and his, his marriage, his relationship with his wife, Maureen Orth, he was he was a, a loyal Democrat, and he was a he was the bureau chief at NBC. There was no question he was Democrat and lean left, but he was not the same person as these people showing up at a town hall. But that's not the case today. Steve Bannon showed up at CPAC yesterday. Now, the, the pre-pub on Bannon is that he's a white supremacist, that he's a racist, that he's uh, alt-right, that he's uh, all these horrible things. He's just a despicable human. If you listen to the media, if you listen to anti-Trumpers, Steve Bannon is just human debris. Okay? Nothing to back that up. Except that he ran bribery. There's literally nothing. There's no history of white supremacy or anything of the sort. You realize the last time we really had serious white supremacy was when the Democrats ran the South. They were the last white supremacists. They and their military wing, the KKK. Those Democrat governors and so forth. And Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood and eugenics, whose objective was to eliminate the African-American race, those were the white supremacists. You don't find white supremacists other than the people at the Southern Poverty Law Center, that left-wing hate group, and who they claim to identify. But they're the biggest bunch of kooks on the face of the earth, but to the media, they are the Bible on who is a hate group and who isn't. Southern Poverty Law Center. So you heard Bannon... You may not have heard. I, Bannon yesterday talked about three things that were in the Trump agenda. One of the things Bannon talked about was the need to eliminate and get control of the administrative state. Now, what does that mean to you? It means shrink the bureaucracy. It means weed out the people who have not been elected, who are deeply buried in this bureaucracy and are issuing regulations that are not backed by law, and they mandate things on people without any constitutional authority to do it. Weed that out and shrink the size of the bureaucracy. Bannon also talked about a distinct American culture and restoring a distinct American culture. Now, what does that mean to you? What if it, I believe in that, too. I, there, there is, there was a distinct American culture. It's what every immigrant assimilated to. Prior to the 1920s, when they came from Europe, 
when they came from Mexico, when they came in from wherever they came, they assimilated and became Americans. There was a distinct American culture, and it was rooted and traceable to our founding documents. So what does distinct American culture mean to you? Well, I heard David Gregory, the former host of Meet the Press, and here's a guy that, 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 that during the Clinton Lewinsky thing was a reporter for NBC on it and so forth. This guy, David Gregory, said the language of the uniqueness of American culture is the kind of white nationalist language to me that harkens back to the kind of language we have heard before. So Steve Bannon is talking about a distinct American culture and reducing the administrative state, and David Gregory, now of CNN, says that language equals white nationalist language or white supreme. What he's claiming that what Bannon wants is to go back to the days of slavery, go back to the days when the only people that counted in America were white people. Now that is radicalism like I can't explain to you. And I don't know that David Gregory has believed that his entire adult life. When did he when did he descend into believing that kind of tripe? That is pure bigotry radicalism. To think that a distinct American culture is white that's the kind of stuff they're teaching on campus today. White privilege. Why you should feel guilty at being white. When did all of this infect David Gregory? And then the next example Poor Chris Cuomo, this guy. I do not know what happened to this guy. Let me remind Chris Cuomo, he's the son, one of the sons of Mario the Pious. Chris Cuomo, when, when Obama went down to Cuba after supposedly opening up relations, and the pictures came out of Cuba, and unmistakable poverty and, and uh, it's just the pictures told an entirely different story of what these numbskulls think Cuba is, the home of the world's best health care and the icon Fidel Castro. I don't know what they thought Cuba was, but they were shocked. And Chris Cuomo said, when are these communists going to realize that communism elevates everybody economically? And I watched that in my mouth fell. Who in the hell taught this kid? What in the world? Who told him that communism raises economic circumstance. Who told him that communism elevates? Where can he point to in the world that people living under communism are wealthy and rich and getting wealthier and that they're free to pursue these things? You can't because it doesn't exist, but yet that's what he thinks. Okay, that's one. This is the piece de resistance. When Trump rescinded Obama's bathroom bill, Christopher Cuomo said, well, there was a, see, and Christopher Cuomo responding to a person who asked, what do you tell a 12-year-old girl who doesn't want to see a penis in the locker room? Somebody said to Andrew, Chris Cuomo, what do you tell a 12-year-old girl who doesn't want to see a penis in the locker room? Chris Cuomo responded, I wonder if she's the problem or her overprotective and intolerant dad teach tolerance. So to Chris Cuomo, tolerance means a 12-year-old should want to see a naked male in the bathroom running around flouting his penis. And to oppose that is intolerant. These people are nuts. And they anchor the news. They're literally insane. When did this happen to these people? You're listening to Rush Limbaugh. The big... Now, you heard me right. Chris Cuomo, 12-year-old girl who doesn't want to see a guy running around naked in her bathroom. She's the problem. Her parents are the problem. They haven't taught her tolerance. She's an intolerant bigot. Any wonder people think that a sizable portion of our culture is genuinely sick. You know what Pat Buchanan, Pat Buchanan had a, his most recent column, he thinks this isn't soluble. 
It's, it's fascinating to study Buchanan. Buchanan had been writing for the longest time, longing, just hoping for a guy like Trump to come along, because that would bring the country back together. And obviously, uh, it's going to be a while on that. So Buchanan said, you know, maybe the th- maybe we're, we're too far gone. Maybe let California seed. You know, let, let every liberal who believes what they believe and want to let, let them just move there and, and, and let them secede from the, from the country and have their own country and just get out. They're not happy here. We're not happy having them there. We don't want to be among them. You know, let them, they want to run their own affairs and if somebody attacks them, then let them fight their own war. It's a think piece. I don't know how serious he is in actually advocating it. It's a think piece. I think it. Uh, I read it at World Net Daily yesterday or the day before. But it's his piece is rooted in his belief that this culture war that we're in is got no bridges. That there isn't any hope of any compromise or living together or based on the left. They clearly are not interested. They don't want anything around them other than what they already think, hook, line, and sinker. And if thinking, if, if something that they oppose is anywhere near, they're going to just devote themselves to destroying it and rooting it out. Because they, interestingly, have no tolerance whatsoever for literally anything. Rush Limbaugh.